silicon solar cells are on the roofs right now and they are really low cost the cost has been coming down now perovskite solar cells have demonstrated great efficiency they've surpassed the efficiency of silicon in about 10 years these are also extremely cheap and a new class this is the generation 3 solar cells which is solution based solar cells so in principle they are much cheaper than silicon but however the biggest snag in all of this was always long term durability will they survive for 20 years 25 years just like the silicon does uh, and I think that this work goes a long way in demonstrating a pathway to achieving that target. So this is the 3D perovskites, that's the bottom layer and there's a 2D perovskite that grows on top which protects the perovskite. So one of the major problem is that uh, both, are ha both usually dissolves in the same solvent. So it is difficult to grow these two films together. So that we've discovered a solvent where uh, we can selectively dissolve one particular perovskite and the other doesn't dissolve in that and which helps in the formation of thin films of by like different stacks of these thin films so we can either grow this at the bottom we can grow this at the top uh, making different stacks of each of the layers and hence protect against stability or whatever one of the major problems with the perovskite field right now is the stability of perovskites and their durability in extrinsic uh, external stimuli like temperature humidity light so here we have a measurement apparatus which measures the devices at 85 degrees temperature and 85 degrees humidity. And we have an external stimuli of light as well. One of the things that we see in our new development is that perovskites with 2D layer on top can outlast the perovskite with just 3D layers by thousands of hours. Different materials have different electronic properties mostly. And so between the 3D and the 2D, uh, we're going to shoot a laser at it because that energy structure and the bands are going to be different. And that's the different properties of the amount of light it will emit to or the amount of light it can then take in to then create, when you put it into a solar cell, create the current that's flowing through it um, from when you get it from the sun. And so that's, that's why the reason we're shooting lasers at it is to measure those specific differences. Um, and one of the coolest parts is that we also saw when we had the 2D on top of the 3D, it was much brighter, showing that with our cells, when we got a higher efficiency, it made sense because we're seeing less losses, which would make the more intense emission here that we're measuring. It really allows you to have a lot of different applications of solar, so photovoltaics uh, is one. There's different types of photovoltaics, bifacial, where light comes in from both sides. This would also enable some tandem uh, solar cells, flexible solar cells. Uh, it also allows you to put, uh, you know, make a solar cell without having any metal contact on this this is something that we are working on and i think the next step going forward is to be able to demonstrate some more scale to be able to make a mini module using the process that we have and that's that's the next step for us